Okay, so hello everyone. Um, just I uh, shorthanded uh, what kicked RS is to WKOA uh, because there is some code of conduct or something like that. Um, my name is uh, Honza Gretz. I'm Python programmer since that's actually not a typo because I still don't consider myself being Python programmer, but I'm doing Python since about 2010. Um, most of my work is bug fixing because I'm not a Python programmer. Uh, and currently I work for Kiwi.com uh, in automation team. Uh, and I prepared my talk about uh, Redis. Um, is there anyone who's ever heard about Redis? Cool. And who's ever used Redis? Cool. And who's using Redis on a daily basis on production? Cool. Um, so I have just several notes what we did and what wasn't actually really cool and uh, what kicked our asses in the meantime. So Redis is open source in-memory data structure store. Uh, this is actually from redis.io. Um, where you can download Redis, and it it's here because, uh, like, the note is here because it actually contains the word database, uh, but it's not a good um, idea to use Redis as a database for, at least for us. Uh, we did it, we tried it, we lost many, many data, and we are trying to avoid using Redis as a database. It's cool for caching, it's cool for um, temporary data uh, storage, but as a database like as is, uh, we don't use it too much. Okay, thing number one. Uh, when you download a Python package, Redis, uh, there are two basic uh, classes to uh, work with Redis server or Redis client. There is a Redis and strict Redis. Um, Redis is more Pythonic way. Um, there, are, there is a different order of arguments for some uh, functions. Strict Redis tries to be uh, really strict about um, notation and so on, so it should 100% copy the usage of uh, Redis uh, command line interface. If you use Redis command line interface, I strongly recommend you to use strict Redis. Um, once, <laughs> once one of our programmers uh, used just Redis and we all use strict Redis and we spend like hour or so just finding the bug why his code doesn't work with our code because he had just uh, switched arguments. Um, what kicked RS is number two. Uh, there is a connection timeout. Uh, it is set by default. I don't know what the number is. I tried to look for it, but I didn't find it. Um, if you don't use socket timeout and initialize strict Redis, it may not uh, be connected to server as well. Um, Redis works as a, like it sends commands, waits for response and so on. So you will be able to create a strict Redis instance, but when you send some command, you can get stuck, which is for some production data or when you have some script which you want to uh, be really fast and really quick. You don't want to wait two minutes to just get the error that you can't connect to Redis. So you can use socket timeout. Um, it will it will raise exception even before that time, and it may save you a lot of troubles. Uh, a lot of troubles uh, like with inconsistency against. Um, development environment and production environment when you switch to different Redis, which is not, or which may be not uh, running at that time, uh, just saves time. Redis data types, uh, this is cool. Uh, I actually was looking into documentation and there are like five types of strings 
which all are string. Redis has just string. So if you set a, an integer to Redis, if you save it, um, you will get a string from response. So uh, mind your data types, uh, floats, integers, um, anything else, it will be stored as a string and it will be retrieved as a string. So you should do, um, uh, you should uh, switch data types if you want to use your values properly. Uh, I think we had some bug when we, uh, when we use get function on a key and it returned us zero, but it returned us zero as a string, which is a true value. So our if statement went okay, like, yeah, it is set, even though the zero meant it is not set. Um, data types everywhere. Uh, what kicked RS is with uh, usage. Um, we had several, like, they are not like just Python issues or not at all Python issues. It's like the uh, overall issues of how you use Redis as a storage. Uh, we were using Redis for caching DB settings. Uh, it's great, it's cool. You don't want to ask a database for settings you want to use like 10 times or 10,000 times per minute. You want to load it from Redis. It's faster, it's um, cheaper, it's just really better. But you should mind though uh, that the data will get obsolete. Um, you can do two ways of solving this issue. You can uh, run some current job which will um, load the data, and every time it loads the data, it deletes all data. Or better is to set expire on those, what? Set expire on those keys with database values. Um, it's, uh, expire will delete those keys, um, will delete those keys um, automatically, so you don't have to handle it anywhere else. And uh, you can just load data on uh, failover, which is also good to have. Um, we had these issues. We were saving data. Uh, we were saving DB settings. And when we changed settings in DB directly, it wasn't, uh, it didn't propagate to Redis. So we had to wait some time. That's for caching DB settings for us. Um, set your expires uh, or you will get, you will have all data and it's also pretty hard to find these issues or this issue specifically because you don't know what's wrong. Like you, you would swear you changed the settings in database, it should work, um, but you just forget about Redis and it still has all data and uh, uses all settings. Um, Redis log. Um, does, did anyone use Redis log? Cool. Um, <laughs> so you know what's probably wrong in here. Um, we had this idea that we could use locking over Redis. Locking is uh, when you want to um, lock several processes and run run them one by one, for example. Um, we had that idea and we started implementing it, uh, but we did this nasty thing. It's still somewhere in our codes. Uh, we are asking for status of the log and then we are setting the log and it it's two different operations and between those two different operations like anything can happen uh, it can be context switch and some else process can do this uh, run this code and you can end up by two processes running in parallel uh, with one same lock um, it looks probably like this um, 
this can be handled by set an x function in Redis, uh, which does uh, which sets the value if value is not already set. It will return you true if it was able to set the value, or false if the value was already set. And you can use um, this function. And this is more proper uh, using of Redis log. Or you can use Python Redis log module, which is really cool. It handles everything, handles queues for log, handles proper locking, and does all the job. Uh, if you were considering using logs over Redis, uh, please use, or I recommend you to use uh, Redis log module. Uh, in memory only storage, um, this is not mandatory and I believe it is not set by default. By default, Redis is set, it uh, stores data also to hard drive. And so when you shut down the Redis server, you are safe. You have your data on uh, hard drives and you can, when you run the server again, it will load the data from hard drive. Uh, but mind your provider setting. Um, we are, I think we are now using Amazon and Amazon has a setting it doesn't handle storing data into hard drives. So if you plan to store critical data in Redis, uh, be prepared that uh, when the Redis shuts down, like for anything, outage, anything, uh, you will again lose those data. Uh, it will not be retrieved from hard drive when it's not saved in hard drive. Um, that's actually one of the reasons why it's not good to use Redis as a database, or we think it's not good. And what kicked our ass is big time, like this is the biggest uh, issue. It's probably not, a, an, not an issue, but it's the biggest thing. Uh, by all of this, by using Redis for uh, locking processes, um, by using Redis for queues, by using Redis for DB caching and setting, uh, we actually made our Redis a single point of failure. Like when our Redis in our team stops working, uh, everything stops working. Uh, just we just can't live with it anymore. Uh, not sure if it's a problem or not, but again, it's additional service you have to handle. You have to make sure it will work. It will not. Uh, it will not have any like outages or anything. Um, as we are using AVS, uh, they actually had one outage. It was several months ago. I don't know if you if you saw it. They had problems with um, DNS servers, like their internal DNS servers, and uh, the generated addresses for servers just stopped working. The servers were all uh, up and running, but you couldn't connect because the address uh, uh, didn't work. So even for AVS, even for DigitalOcean, anything, uh, the Redis can stop work. And probably in one point it will. Um, just all you can do is to be prepared for it. Um, so. Don't make same mistakes as us, please. Uh, those were stupid mistakes and we are still trying to handle them. Um, that's probably uh, everything from me. Thank you very much. And thanks for your patience. I'm a first time speaker here. Thank you very much. Uh, during the, your talk, uh, some uh, several questions uh, appeared, so we can get through them. Uh, first one is, uh, what's your experience with uh, Redis cluster replication? Uh, we were considering it, um, but we still have no experience. We didn't try it, uh, make it work or anything. So, no. Okay, ne next question is, uh, why do you not like to use Redis with this persistence en enables as a dat uh, database? Why, do, why don't you like it as a database? As a database. 
um, because it can be used, I believe it can be used as a database and you can store data to Redis and have them like uh, all 100%. Um, but um, I think you should handle that server by your own because most of the providers will not give you a chance to um, save your data or set DB saving and so on and you can really uh, lose the data. Like just lose the data, it's like puff and nothing's there. Um, also, uh, Redis has no strict, um, or not no strict commands on data and so on, uh, but uh, you can set anything to any value. Uh, you can set um, passwords, anything, and then just in some different script, uh, you can rewrite all these values without knowing. Uh, when you do it for database, you some sort of the database is so um, the query for the database is so um, not it's so not simple that you will probably notice that you are you may be rewriting something or you may do some strong changes. But for Redis, you just do r dot set, and that's it. And you don't know if you rewrote some data you already had in Redis, or if you set new data. Uh, it can be solved by using the set annex function, uh, but it's just too many. I believe it can be used as a database with proper uh, usage of Redis, but we definitely don't do proper usage of Redis. You mentioned losing data. Uh, what about master-slave uh, configuration or con conf I don't know, uh, probably configuration? Um, that's cool. Uh, we still didn't have um, any time to set it, so we don't yet use master-slave replications, I believe. Uh, we were also thinking of using one of the slaves as a developer server, so we would uh, use, we would test our scripts as a slave which has disabled uh, writing so you wouldn't or the changes you would do wouldn't propagate to master and then to other slaves uh, but i think it's implemented in the newest version of redis and uh, again uh, providers or server providers still don't still use old versions so we didn't use this one uh, Master slave is cool, but we still haven't had enough time to migrate to it. Are you saying that Kiwi users uh, uses a single unreplicated unre Redis master node? Uh, no, that's actually not a Kiwi. I forgot to mention it. We are just one small team of all teams and developers of Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi doesn't run on one. <laughs> unreplicated and un unmanaged uh, Redis instance. This is an uh, instance we use in our automation team, um, where it's about 20 or 25 people, and uh, it doesn't contain uh, any critical data. It doesn't contain any passengers information or anything like that. We just use it for this stuff, for queuing, for locking over processes, and so on. Okay, how does Redis algorithm for deleting keys up? How does the algorithm for deleting keys after expiring work? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, so once again, uh, <laughs> how does uh, Redis algorithm for deleting keys after expiring work? Um, not pretty. Uh, this is handled by or if you if the. Uh, if you mend the Redis uh, itself um, or the expire function itself, it's handled by Redis. It's not handled by a Python module, it's handled by Redis itself. You just set um, like expiration for this key. You set key like, okay, set this key's name as a, I don't know, uh, kluge and set the value to one and you then set uh, that you want uh, the key 
key named Kruj uh, to expire after like five seconds or 10 minutes or so. And uh, Redis server itself will handle this. After 10 minutes, it will automatically uh, disable the key or maybe delete the key. Not sure how it works in specific. But you don't have to handle it uh, anywhere, anywhere in your code. You just set the expiration for the key. Okay, and the last question is, do you use Replication and Sentinel? Uh, no, we don't use Replication and Sentinels for this one instance, for this uh, in our team. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your talk. I thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic.